Our team's going to divisionals, boys. The tweakers will play right. on Show Grass and Dirt. Fuck, turn down the volume. Have to bring that up during the uh, amateur sports stars Fuck of the week. Fuck, Dick Gibbard! Dangerously like amateur porn stars of the week. Fuck, I've Dick got Dick one, exactly, but I've got one. I, like, reading the thing, I do it's have one. I have an amateur sports star of the okay, week. Okay, well, I guess you can make your nomination, man. Maybe we'll win. I will. And here, drop bottom. That's an easy Fuck Dick Gibbard! Hey, Montana starts with the fucking M. It's at Twins territory. It all the way to Montana. You're right. All right. Well, actually, it doesn't. Fuck it's Dick Gibbard! <laughs> right. Fuck all right. Dick Gibbard! Fuck Dick Gibbard! Two, one. Shit. Hello and welcome to this thing we call Minnesota Foul Play-By-Play. I'm your host, Anthony Mariano, and I'm joined, as usual, by my co-host, the Brothers Haas. How are you guys doing today? Yo, yo, yo. It's a great day. Uh, you played some softball today, Brad? I didn't I, I didn't play. I, I coached today. Yeah. It's Oh, it's, that's the practice that Mike missed. Yeah, it's my it's my favorite time of fucking. The tweets year. walked off, didn't they, Mike? My boy Kellogg just walked us off. Yeah! Finally a guy you can hit. We're gonna get to that. But first, did anybody see another dynamite? AEW Dynamite tonight. No, I I'm the only one. That. No, I'm the only no. one. Oh my God, boys! Okay, Anthony, sorry, I just got home. I just got home. Well, let's start from the top. If anyone forgot how great Ray Fenix is, they got a hell of a reminder tonight. Walk in the barricade into a Hurricane Rana. Come on, boys! Crazy. Claudio's just way too strong, though. But Yuta and Claudio versus the Lucha Brothers should be such a great match for the Ring of Honor Championships. Mark Briscoe, Mark Briscoe is going to be the special referee for the NEW Tag Team Championship match between FTR and Jarrett and Lethal. And what? What's that I hear? Is that a thunderclap? Thunder is back. Thunder is back. Hmm, I wonder what that could be building to. Also, Miro's back, but no one really cares. AEW International Champion Orange Cassidy pushed beyond his limits to defeat Daniel Garcia. Garcia actually performed better technically, but nobody does a better interview than Orange. So, or a better entrance. Is the reign of the Orange Punch coming to an end, though? I said on the last show it was. Look at Wembley Stadium. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Kyle Fletcher versus Orange Cassidy at the biggest stadium in London, perhaps? I think so. Witches were banned from ringside for the AEW Trios Championship after Julia Hart from Bloomington, Minnesota, defeated Anna J.A.S. The Best Amigos took on the House of Black under open house rules. And it went as you would expect. Because the House of Black always wins, which is exactly why you can't have people betting on pro wrestling. I mean, come on. Come on. I can predict this shit way better than a 50% flip. Hey, you could actually, you could, you could bet on it if you're like that coach for Alabama baseball. Oh, I do bet it on it in <laughs> Australia during pay-per-views. <laughs> Bandito was amazing, as usual. But the house always win, as I've said, which is exactly why you can't people bet on this. Omega Mox in a steel cage. Sounds like a damn monster movie because it is and was. My God. Why, Don? Why? And in the quiet words of Orange Cassidy, I'm so tired, Renee. Mike, why can't the twins hit? I just want to first, I want to wish all of the wrestlers good luck over in England. I hope they all perform at and <laughs> I really hope that Kenny Omega's all right. My God, man. Oh, they flew out the goddamn cage tonight. They, they broke the cage. It was amazing. So much blood. Oh, God. Nobody bleeds like John Moxley. Uh, except for maybe the twins. They stopped the bleeding tonight, though. Did they not? A fourth yeah, win still- in extras? It, well, both teams. I mean, Padres are struggling, too. Their lineup struggling to put offense together, too. The Twins just, as you stated, can't hit for shit. They're um, fourth in strikeouts at 336. This was as of uh, before tonight's game. 9.6 Ks per game, boys. Third most in the majors. Last in hits. And second one, worst OBP. Do you know what's day. sad? Is the, the Twins' offense mirrors – statistically the twins pitching staff damn they're near. as bad as the twins pitching staff is good yes dynamite drop in brad that's true 
I mean, we've never had that before, though, have we? A twitching staff we can be proud of. <laughs> no. And you can't help them out? Uh, sad. They should have. They should probably have five or six more wins this season already. I did see one. I think we were, I think part of it is a little luck. I did look at some today where the Twins are, for hard hit balls, we're like fourth or fifth. So it's we're hitting the ball hard. It's just right, right ass fucking A little bit people. of bad like, luck going on. I know a yeah. guy that's not hitting the ball hard though. Oh well, I will get to that. We predicted that Jose Miranda should be sent down, and he was today. Uh, and we predicted that. Uh, let's Cal- go, let's go, baby! I've been we- saying it all fucking year. Fuck Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I got to drop him off my fantasy team. He's just been sitting on the bench anyway. He got read his rights today, boys. Well, I mean, let's look at his numbers. He's still he still got had, MLB, or he's still got options. I mean. Right. And he the, had more at-bats than Buxton and Correa, despite an, a 588 OPS. I know he had a double yesterday, but. Well, that uh, I mean, the Farmer injury really forced the Twins' hand, though, where it's right. like they were forced to play him even when he was struggling. And hopefully he finds his back down at, or his bat back at AAA, because when he, we've seen it before, when he's on, he's one of the best bats in our lineup but sophomore seasons tend to be more difficult they figure you out and you've had enough of bats where they know your weaknesses where where you're weak in the swing zone yeah uh, uh, another his, his, his weakness is up high right out of the zone elevated fastballs he's been struggling with that yes a lot everybody on the twins roster seems to be struggling with that uh but kyle farmer was raking at uh triple triple a st paul three of his four hits were extra base hits uh he came off the il wednesday he played today how do you do how do you look who kirloff yeah, no farmer or, Farmer me got a a lucky base hit i think a second at bat he had a walk a base hey, hit we'll take the one he got yeah hey he got pulled in, out the words, the end. in the words of my good dear pal anthony variano these are major leaguers going against major league pitchers. It is a tough thing. I would say no hit. Is <laughs> You're no, right, fair, Brad. Fair Especially enough. during the age of the shift. Like back in the day, it was so hard to hit if you were fucking left-handed. Come on, lay out a fucking butt for Christ's sake. They should have never played <laughs> as many innings as they did tonight. If anybody could fucking bunt in major league baseball, these games wouldn't go 17 fucking innings. Do you know Maybe a guy that could? Who's that? Louis Arise could. But... <laughs> he surely could. You're right. And the guy's hitting over 400 in my hands. <laughs> ah, great trade. Ah, my Brett Rooker's the best hitter in baseball. Ah. <laughs> oh, the knife from my chest. Ah. Mike, hey, you don't agree we... that we're regretting that already. No, I don't. Why, Why would we? If he, I Last night was the first time I was at a sports bar in Billings. First time I watched the A's the play first time you were in a sports bar in Billings that's a bold taste lie yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> what's the name it's the Irish pub downtown of course it was hey shout out to all of our island friends out there hey you get tickets to AEW at Wembley Stadium man all in tickets are available there's 60,000 sold so that means you know there's at least 40,000 left sorry <laughs> okay back to my Everybody needs to cool down on Rucker or anybody that's performing for the A's. If you watch their games, they're always down by fucking five or six runs. So they're never facing the best pitchers on a team. Everything is always in the zone. Everything's always in the zone, though. You're always going to keep it in the zone. Hitting's a lot easier. The guy's got an OPS. It's like 1.4, for Christ's sake. It's ridiculous. Yeah, no shit. If if your team's got a seven-run lead, you're going to pitch to guys. Like, that's... I don't think it matters. We still see done. him. It, you don't. And I mean, nobody's going out there trying to give up hits to Brent Rooker. I get. You're not afraid of him. What's he going to do? Hit a long ball and fucking cut the lead to fucking twenty six? Like <laughs> who gives a <laughs> shit? The A's are absolute fucking trash. That's. I it. mean. Who that fucking shit? owner should get it's strung gone. up in Oakland. He's a fucking piece of shit. Well, they're they're playing, they're doing, they're pulling the major league, baby. They're just trying to get to Vegas. That's all they're doing. Yeah, fuck Vegas too. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind having a major league baseball club in Vegas. We could go down there, stay with my sister, have pool parties, and see the Twins play. I mean, they'd have to play inside though. It's that. Oh, absolutely. 
the night outdoor out, outdoor games after the light uh the sun goes down aren't bad out there but yeah day games would be a fucking nightmare but yeah. there's no hotter seat in the world than fucking anaheim angel stadium i tell you what oh, oh my god, god. <laughs> in the direct sunlight Third degree burns on my ass and i poured water on the fucker first it was incredible it was like boiling on that fucker it was amazing hey i mean if you're not gonna move the fucking team Put some pads on those fucking seats or warn people you can be burned if you sit on one of our seats during a day game. Hey, they Speaking were... since... Go ahead, Mike. I'll, I'll, well, I, just I was going to say they're here. great seats and we got to sit next to that Nick. Uh, what's that comedian from Minnesota? Huge spike. Oh, the kid. Adam Sandler's friend. He came into yeah, uh, the men's clothing store I used to work in. Yeah, Nick, whatever his name is. <laughs> Nick, whatever. He, was, he is. didn't have any. He didn't have any twins here, so he shows up in his fucking Viking shirt, Vikings hat. He's a huge <laughs> Vikings fan. Yeah. Hey, that's what you do when you go to a fucking Twins game. Fuck the Twins. Let's go. Right. <laughs> anyway, uh, okay. Speaking of Oakland, did yeah. you like? Have you guys ever? Did you guys go to Oakland when you? No, were I'll never Brooklyn? go. It's the worst place to watch baseball. I, I'd rather I wonder, go to Tampa Bay. I wonder if their beer prices are the same as. At Oracle or whatever their fucking stadium is. You can Google that shit. They do a rundown of it every year. I just saw a thing at Golden State. A 16-ounce beer is 17 fucking dollars and 50 cents. Oh, my God. Yeah, a buck an ounce is about what you can expect, but that's insane. Cleveland. Cleveland. 525. Oh, that's more like it. Let's fucking go there. Okay, I'm done with beer. Cheers. (laughs) Hey, speaking of alcoholic beverages... I spilled fucking champagne on my keyboard for this Carlos Correa. The fuck? Brad, I know you got a lot to say on this subject. You've been saying it all year. You've been calling him a bum since day one. Take it away. Honestly, and you know what? And good for the Twins fan the other day booing him. You know, when he, the he one said that. Yeah, it was a lot of fans. Yeah. 16,000 at that game. Like, like my, but that's, I just can't wrap my head around it that. You're this good and you struggle this bad. I mean, he just does not look good. He's looked right lost now. at the plate. So is this the thing? Is this because the Twins are so fucking good? We're getting every team's best pitcher, and that's why he's not hitting it because no, it's he's... not in the zone. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just hit the. I don't. I, I don't know. It's he went major, over six against tough, Oak, but... Contrell and like a bunch of like m- m- mediocre relievers no. out of the San Diego pen. Like he looks, he looks like shit, like absolute garbage. I mean, most of the roster does. They are chasing a hell of a lot of pitches upstairs. Like they are just not catching up to fastballs. And it's not even like, you know, high velocity fastballs. They're struggling with like 93 to 95 mile an hour fastballs up and in. So don't and they just need to lay off those pitches and they can take more walks. So shouldn't it be like you are you wait and you are more selective on pitches when your pitching staff is keeping you in the game, as opposed to if you don't have a pitching staff, then you're trying to do it offensively. Like, yeah, I, I don't understand this approach by the hitting coach. I mean, there's a lot of first uh, pitch strikes. I usually like a first pitch strike because you can almost guarantee that one will be in there in the <laughs> zone, but you can't guarantee it's a fastball anymore. So you got guys throwing nasty splitters and freaking backup curveballs and just crazy ass shit now you just it's that's really hard to hit according to our carlos correa according to our canadian boy uh morneau he said today he talked to uh correa before the game today and correa said part of the pro- he's like he's not making excuses i he's a classy bum like he he doesn't make excuses for himself when he doesn't do good i like uh, that yeah, he said you know, um, well, i boo myself too yeah, but uh, he has made some minor changes to his swing to try to extend his health so it doesn't put so much work on his bat. Uh, he said that has it's yet to kick in. It's going to take some time for that. But today, I mean, took a walk, took one or two walks, fucking got robbed by fucking target field for a home run today. He hit a double. I mean, that fucking was like four inches. It would have been a home run in any other fucking, well, not any other stadium, but right. a lot. We're playing a swamp out here, you know, it's wet and it's hard to get through that air. So, I mean, it. hopefully this is like the turnaround because it seems like he's been coming up in big situations and just fucking shit in the bed. Like, yeah. 
lot of guys left on base. What is this? He was 0 for 5, six base runners stranded in a 6-1 loss on Tuesday night. Woo! But Yikes! And, and my last thing on Morneau, I really like what he said during the game where he's, he's like, great. he's like, I'm not going to lie. It, it stinks watching your team when there's no offense. But as a Twins fan, we're still leading the division. We got a winning record. And I mean, our bats are, are, they have to come around sometime. So, I mean, we got to at least be happy that the rest of the central is such fucking garbage. Like Cleveland lost in Detroit today, like five zero. So it's like Detroit second in the central right now, I think. Yeah, I know. (laughs) How can you be my thing though, as a fan, how can you be happy where you have arguably statistic wise, a top three rotation, a top three total pitching staff, you're just barely above 500. You're barely winning the shittiest division in baseball. How can you be happy about that? I mean, you can't. Just because at least we're not at least we're not third in the division. I mean, it's like watching we could have started the Guardian 10. baseball. It's like watching the Guardians play. Like the Twins turned into the Guardians, where our pitching is just dynamite, and then our offense comes up, and you're like, Jesus Christ, we won one to nothing with three fucking hits? Are you kidding me? (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I wanted to ask this because I read this on Twins Daily today. Uh, Somebody wrote about how Donovan Solano has failed already. Um, I'll get you the name here in a second, but he's hitting 240, 240, and 360 against lefties, which is exactly what he was brought in to do. It was written by Cody Perkle. It's like it was a blog. Um, Yeah, that he had a key pinch hit fucking hit for us today in the fucking bottom of the 10th to keep the game going. All right. So, I mean. And he also had his jaw wired shut, did he not? When no, he that was Farmer. Oh, was, Kyle Farmer was the one who got hit in the face? Yeah, he got, oh, so that was so brutal. That was, wow, that's impressive. Do you, how, it, would it be tough to chew with your jaw wired shut? I think so. I mean, no, your lips aren't No, you still have shut. access to your lips. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah, but recommend you can't, it. Like, that would be weird. Sure was. You could still move injury. it like a little bit, but how? I bet. I bet Nick Swisher could do it. If oh could fuck find yeah, way, he would. <laughs> Swisher sweets. That that would have been Did the you best. Did play in the promo. Savannah Bananas game? <laughs> they threw what? behind him. The catcher set up like four feet behind the batter's box, and they threw behind him, and he. Did one of those numbers where he uh, shakes his hips and goddamn, just the chaw on that guy still, even in a fucking basically a, a wreck softball game against you guys the Savannah watch- Bananas. Hilarious. You guys, you guys watch that shit? I just watch it on Instagram. Great Instagram follow. No, you should watch that on ESPN. It is fucking hilarious. I bet like, it is. And these they guys got a world tour for players. Christ's sake. It must be great entertainment. Who's the guy from uh, the Oakland A's? Um, Back in the day, long hair, just Eckersley? a no. He had played like I want to say like left bait, left field. God, what the fuck is his name? Um, Johnny Damon. He's one of the coaches on the oh, team. Is he? I wish I had a computer in front of me. I'd look it up, but yeah, they have a fucking show about these guys about how they started. I saw that on ESPN Plus, right? Yeah, it's yeah. fucking hill hill areas. Anybody else got anything else on the twins? We talked about no. Rooker. Are the, the, Good I was gonna, my, let's wait. Let me make my argument for why we're losing the Brent Rooker deal. We got Emilio Pagan and Chris Paddock who have contributed negative war over two seasons. He's already contributed 1.5 wins over replacement to that team this season. Hey, and Pagan's last like five, six outings. Not bad. He, not terrible. He's, Little he's doing good. He's not Bortles. giving up fucking runs or anything. So. Just wait. Just wait. No, I know. He's, but I can't. He, if he if he performs well, I can't talk shit about him. It's just like that's that's the reality of it. You can't hate a guy who's no doing something. Do you wrong. know? How, do you know how fun this twin season would be if actually the offense was fucking mediocre? They need a professional hitter in the middle of that lineup. They are lacking yeah. a veteran hitter in that lineup. Like yeah, they, but they're still missing way. goddamn Nelson Cruz, basically. <laughs> I mean, uh, that would be a great guy to throw in the middle of that lineup. We still got what? Still got like fucking over 100 games to play, boys. There's still a lot of baseball uh, left. I mean, fuck, does Joe want to come back? <laughs> I bet he can still hit. All fuck right. Joe, bring, bring Tommy back. 
Speaking of hitters, we got, we got a few hitters in our amateur sports stars of the week. Uh, I write a little roundup of some of the best amateur athletes in the state of Minnesota every week. And these are some of the best that I come <clears> across uh, in reading about their exploits. The bronze medalist for me is uh, sophomore Alexa Skogwist, I think is how you pronounce her name, of St. Francis High School. She hit three din- dingers in a 17-0, drubbing a Monticello and had a walk-off three-run dong to beat Cambridge Asante 8-5. Over five games, she hit 588 with four doubles, four dingers, and 13 RBI. Sign me up. Put her in my lineup. She's Christ. currently running second in the voting with over 1,000 votes cast. So uh, go to our Substack or foulplaybyplay.com. You can find the links to vote there. Silver Bring her up to the Twins. Right? Well, you guys should like this one. Sophomore William Haas of Rockford struck out 18 it's, batters it's in the complete pronounced game pass. shutout. <laughs> At Howard Lake Waverly Winstead, May 4th, he allowed just one hit and three walks. He also went and combined seven for 11 with three walks, two RBI, and two runs scored mm-hmm. over four games played. A regular Otani, that one, has. Thank you, Brad, <laughs> for that correction. And our gold medalist, who hardly has any votes for some <laughs> reason. Listen to this this line for the week over five games all victories junior lydia simmons went 15 for 17 with two homers six doubles two walks 16 ribbies and 15 runs scored she stole eight bases and nine attempts too her 27 runs scored are the most in minnesota high school softball how is that not the athlete of the week in the state of minnesota oh i agree shit. i agree Holy gotta be the shit. i'm gonna even though it, it it falls out of the realm of Minnesota sports, I'm going to give a shout out. All right, last outside night, looking in. Last night, the uh, Dawson County Lady Red Devils hosted the uh, Miles City Cow Girls, and freshman Abby Worm went three for five, hit her first career home run on varsity last night. Played very well at shortstop as the starting shortstop. Oh, is that Brian Worm's kid? No. Oh. Yes, Brian. Yes, that Brian is Worm's Brian Worm's kid. Worm's kid. Oh, Jesus 100%. Christ, these people it have was... kids that are in high school already in their <laughs> age. <laughs> We're fucking old. We're fucking old. I can understand Brad. He's much older than I am, but hey, damn, it was Brian? awesome. So that my, is a good line. my hats off, honorable mention goes to Abby Worm. All right. Well, in keeping with the ladies, uh, we can all celebrate Marty Gellner, cancer free after surgery. Uh, we take this time to remind women over 40 to please get a damn mammogram. We love breasts on this show. We want to preserve breasts on this show. And the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force is lowering the recommended age for breast cancer screening to 40 in response to an increase in cancer among younger women and disproportionately high mortality rates for black women. Please, 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 if you're over 40, get a damn mammogram. That said. Word. Brad, let's move into the Vikings. The UDFAs. Who are these undrafted free agent steals that the Vikings scored? I gotta look. I don't even know. <laughs> did you <laughs> not read the outline today? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, okay, I didn't. well, there's a linebacker out of Cincinnati. Uh, he's the favorite UDFA of the Athletics, Nick Bumgardner. Five foot ten. You're right okay. there. Yeah. Have, have you seen pictures of this guy when he's playing? I haven't. I have. I, I watched okay. some fucking video on him and then still shots. He's got like fucking decked decked out like murder paint. Like he fucking kills people when he plays. Well, like, that's, he... that's what they've. That's what everyone says about him. They, they were all shocked that he went undrafted, and it seems like a guy who would just you could dial up and put into Brian Flores' defensive scheme because he's just a go getter of the football. And... No, it's definitely, definitely, yeah. I I have heard of this guy. Like. Yeah, if he makes the team, him and fucking sign are going to hurt some players as hard as they fucking hit. Uh, he was ranked second in pressure rate and first in sacks per game. How does this guy go undrafted? Is it just because he's from Cincinnati? Is it because he's 5'10", too? I mean, is that a little short? I I don't know. I mean, there are plenty of 5'10", people shorter than 5'10", who are tough guys in hockey. So, I don't know. It's just an attitude. I mean, but that's the thing, though. Like, in football, they they look at all that bullshit. The size of your hands, the size right. of your fucking feet. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, no, he seems like a steal. Like, get me a at football least... player. I don't care how big he is. Actually, fucking, it, this is 
horrible. This is not a joke. But like when you watch draft shit, it's like a slave auction. It really is. Like they focus so much. Like, oh, I wouldn't draft that guy. His fucking fingers are like half an inch shorter than what fucking. Like it's just he only did two hundred and thirty five pound bench press thirty times at the combine. Yeah. yeah, all this stupid shit that's just like oh yeah, we I'm asked him fucking... and then they no, asked really uh, sensitive questions in the uh the interview process too. Fucking yeah. ridiculous. It's just like they should be, watch the tape. How do they, they fucking play? Automatic free agents and be able to sign with anybody they want. Andre Carter though second. I like that move because we do not know what's happening with Denarius Smith. Um, still don't know. Bring people in. I, I I like it. Uh, let's see. The Athletics. Alec Lewis actually thinks has a, he has a better chance to make the roster. Uh, he calls him a freak of an athlete. They gave him a hefty guarantee. I don't know what that amount is for an undrafted free agent, but it indicates they believe uh, their pass rush specialist Matt Daniels can improve his game, and I would suspect they could. Um. He's an army edge rusher. He's out of army though. Doesn't he have a service time commitment? That's what I, that's what I was wondering when I, I this is one I did see. And that's what I, the first thought I had, I was like, right. um, can but he, he actually go play or is it? They maybe own his rights until his service is complete. I don't know. Well, let's that just could not be go to stupid wars then, man. Yeah. That could be down, yeah. the, down the road. Um, Tech, I don't know. Technically, Griffin Jacks, what is he a member of? He's like fucking, it's not the Navy, it's like Air Force or something. Really? And he's playing, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can get a waiver. That's right. So if he makes the roster, he'll get a waiver of his service time. Yeah, definitely not like when Muhammad Ali said, fuck you, I ain't going to the draft, right? I fucking love me some Muhammad Ali. I do fucking too. love him. Badass. I'm excited, boys. Schedule comes out tomorrow, man. I can't wait. I can't fucking wait. Okay, tell us why you're excited. Yeah. They've already teased a couple games, like uh, the Chiefs and the uh, uh, the Lions Dolphins game is going to end up playing played in London. I guess is what I hear. No, those are out. Those games are out. Um, they teased a game about opening. The opening game will be Chiefs Lions on Thursday night. Um, no, just for personal reasons. I hope. They play Denver in somewhat of warm weather, and the Twins are in town, I think, end of September, something like that. That would be kind of cool to get a double a double I whammy. Fuck, yeah. I want to go to Coors Field so bad. I always want to go to Coors Field. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, me too. I want to see when they go to Vegas, because I do want to go to Vegas to watch them play. I'd like to go see – I, I want to go see that futuristic stadium. Um, they call it the Death yeah, Star. I, I, I'm pretty, I, and just to see, just so I can come out, you know. So next week at this time, I can give you my prediction, which I've last year I got blown out of the fucking water on how good they did. Usually, I've been pretty close by a game or two of the win loss record. So I'm getting excited for that to get that out there. All right, um, and that's the division that they're playing out of the AFC, right? Yes. Denver, Oakland. Okay, so it's just a matter of do we play them at home or on the road is what you're looking forward to. No, that stuff's out. It's just when it is. When it is. I got you. Okay. Like I think they do play Kansas City in Kansas City, I think, too. Oof. Oof. That's going to be ugly. It Oof. could be. Oh, God. I hope it's at the end of the year because I don't think our defense is going to be ready up for him at the beginning of the year. Brian Flores will have him ready, Tony. The genius Brian Flores. The man hey, and boys, speaking of freaking teams, coming on strong on fantasy football or baseball, baby. Put because you beat down. me. <laughs> yeah. You got one win and now you're feeling yourself? Come on, Brad. I got Come two, on. man. Oh, I you got, got two. two? Working on three. Uh, I'm surprised I've got one at all. <laughs> it did not draft well. I did pick up the best free agent available, though, so that guy's been carrying my team. I think, well, no, I think I you went know who way is. too, way too pitcher friendly. Early. Oh, yeah, like, but you guys are all going to be banging on my door, breaking down my door, 10-minute warning for pitchers later in the season. That's that's when I make my move, the trade deadline, no, baby. No, the trick is, is you just pick up these fucking bums that are going to play just so you can get your 12 fucking pitchers, starting pitchers pitch. Huh? And just hope they don't fucking blow up. 
I'm, like I'm, Sandy Alcantara has done all year for me. Yeah, no shit. He's starting to come around. Maybe. That's why you always. <laughs> that's why you gotta have three aces, boys. Three of them. One of them turns into not El Caballo. You just need so, Shohei Otani. That's all you need. Yeah, no kidding. I'm. <laughs> it must be nice having the first fucking overall pick in the draft, eh, Mike? <laughs> Lucky fucker. That's the last time we're doing a goddamn paid. Well, I guess it'll be you know the person who finishes last next year gets the pick. So Which Tony, be me? What, was Blink in Minnesota? Yeah, yeah, it was the top five show I've ever seen, boys. I mean, I, I like I hands down off of TikTok. I've been watching like I've basically watched their whole set yeah. from Coachella. Coachella. Wow, dude! They sounded so damn good. Oh, they are just not the same oh, without Tom oh. DeLonge's whiny voice, man. And God, they played two straight hours without a break. Can you imagine how many calories Travis Barker burned on that stage? It's I just, just, I don't know. He's make me funny. I'm gonna fucking see him at that whatever when we were young. When we were big. young, yeah, I'll be there too. But uh, when you look at the cr- the crowd, is what just. I'm like, we're fucking old. And it's like old and the boringest crowd ever. Yeah. It's a bunch of people fucking my age with like backpacks on their fucking goddamn fake cigarette things and the bottles of water and just dancing like fucking <laughs> idiots. Like, it's just like. Mike, you were right. My back was killing me the next day. Nobody sat down for Blink 182. The fucking response to Turnstile was unacceptable, though. I don't think Minneapolis has any idea who they are because you see any YouTube video of their shows and it's like the wildest scene you've ever seen. I wish I would have been on the floor for that. But for well, tickets the... like 400 to $600. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's, I guess it's like, I'll see this year, but. It's like any sporting event. Like, you know, it's the people who don't give a shit the, or give the least shit sit closest to the action and the people who care the most sit the farthest away it's just like well that's not real great for uh you know an environment i don't know i still put i still put the refused as one of my top three favorite shows of all time refused at Fine Line Cafe a day before the fucking pandemic started in the most intimate of settings yeah my sister saw big yeah. names in los angeles and met that's what uh, she said yep yeah lights and so got his whatever eye. you guys have never been Back when you're in college, going to a fucking John Mayer concert with high school chicks. Tell me about <laughs> the, the time of your life. Oh, God. All right, we got to get to the foul player and foul <laughs> play-by-players of the week. Uh, you know, he, John Mayer was my neighbor when I lived in Prey, Montana. I hit a deer on the end of his driveway, yeah. Uh, never met him. All right, so foul player of the week. This is a pretty easy one. For the athletic hours before Alabama's April 28th baseball game against LSU, Crimson Tide coach Brad Bohannon scratched starting pitcher Luke Coleman due to, quote-unquote, back tightness. The Tide lost 8-6, and it got Bohannon fired after Ohio gambling regulators flagged two irregular bets on the game, both on LSU to win. One of the bets was reported large enough to trigger regulatory checks, and ESPN reported that the person placing the bets was in direct communication with Bohannon when the wagers were placed. Whoops! Two days later, (laughs) Bohannon was out. Um, so I love gambling it. regulations I, working. I love it though. How the game played out. They, they got down eight to zero and then they made a comeback. Like he had to have been fucking shitting his pants in the fucking dugout. That they were but they got fucking close to eight <laughs> six. No, he was Unless shitting he, his pants regardless because he's an idiot who was communicating with a better before game started. That's why you don't use fucking phones and shit, man. Like, yeah, it's pretty silly. But and I mean, Pete Rose I read, was using I read, the bullpen phone during Cincinnati Reds game. <laughs> I read the fucking report on it that there was only like fucking very minimal bets. And the article I read said that there was two bets placed on this fucking game. Like literally, like almost yeah. two bets. Well, you would and imagine that there's not a lot of bets like, on college baseball games. And like, the thing is, is though it. LSU's the number one team in the nation, so like, oh, you why some, some yeah. people put some money down on them? But for the fucking head coach of the other team, like, now, so is it? Is it illegal in my in my if he doesn't scratch their number one pitcher? 
I like the bet. <laughs> you would I think like it. it's fair. All right, let's get to the Minnesota foul player of the week. Drake Signs, a junior at Gustavus Adolphus, was thrown out of the second game of a doubleheader between the Gusties and the St. Olaf Oles, for whom I used to do play-by-play announcing for their football team. On Monday, after he crushed a no-doubter over the left field wall and flipped his bat, I'm nominating the home plate umpire who tossed the Gusties coach as well uh, after ejecting the player. We, this has got to stop. Yeah. No, it has to. I don't. I, Let yeah. the kids have fun, for Christ's sake. It's a game. And these umpires, they want to be the center of attention. I, I, uh, he got no, shit umpires. for a bad flip? Yeah, a, a mild bad flip. A no, very like mild bad say, flip. You do, especially at that level, if you do something really over the top, where it's, it's like really <laughs> dis- dis- disrespectful to the pitcher, I could maybe understand. This was not but this isn't. This isn't like fucking staring down the pitch or like fucking uh, God. Who's the guy who used to be great for Toronto? Got fucking knocked out of second Jose base. Batista. Yeah, that Joey bat Bats. Now that is a brutal bat flip. Like, but I, Brooke I, and Odor, I think, laid him out with one punch. No, let the kids have fun, and, and that's it. Gets increase in the game too. Yeah, like I mean. No, it, it, uh, the only reason I watched it was because he got ejected, though, right? We probably wouldn't have heard about it if the guy had not yeah. got ejected. Exactly. So why not Why not do what the fucking NFL is doing? The old no fun league. Yeah. Now you can do pretty much any dance you want that's not directed, sexually directed explicit. Towards, too ex- too yeah. sexually explicit. Yeah, I get sick of them finding the humping. I love the fucking I humping do love the that humping. they do. Yeah. I mean, let, <laughs> let them hump. I mean, they just scored a touchdown. you have any idea how hard that is? I don't. <laughs> our foul play-by-player play play of the week. Defense. Here's our foul play-by-player of the week. John Anderson hey, I took a, a shot on the Vikings defense, man. I know He's you did. I was trying to steamroll you, man. We only got two minutes left. John Anderson. Ah, oh, made a joke about Las Vegas Golden Knights defenseman Zach Whitecloud saying, what kind of name is that? Great name if you're a toilet paper. <laughs> White Cloud is a member of the Sioux Valley Dakota Nation and one of 10 indigenous hockey players in NHL. Do better, John. Yeah. That's... Come on. Well. I mean, White Cloud, I would wipe my ass with that. But that's... <laughs> it sounds soft. He did score a goal yesterday. They're down 3 nothing right now. Um, but that's, you know, Edmondson's going to win on at home ice at least one of their games, so... I think they got it. I got my money on the Knights for to win the series. White Cloud's my sister's favorite hockey player. Two minute warning. Actually, yeah. And uh, final thing on the Twins: good news that uh, we didn't bring up. Royce Lewis comes back tomorrow. Really? Uh, to start his rehab stand, or just to get ready, starts a yeah. uh, double A tomorrow. He's hitting the ball like he was when he got hurt. Two. Three he could weeks. be up his first fucking. Beginning of June, like yeah, w- well goes, before that. that could be the professional hitter we're missing. No, Fuck third base. He goes, he goes yeah. two Maybe for defense. three in his first fucking game. Call him up, <laughs> so he can blow out his knee for a, what is that third or fourth time? Send Korea we do, down. We do need uh, defensively. Uh, that that has been something the Twins have been missing too. Is our infield defense has been has been piss poor. Yeah, they lost and the I game get, yesterday. Or yeah, six one. It was a closer game than that, but they but, just had three errors in an inning. Fucking Vasquez, what the hell? No, Kirilov at first though he made a dynamite fucking defensive play today, and I keep, Roy Lewis has to provide a jolt for our defense on the infield if he's playing third base. All right, boys, thank you for joining me. Thank you to all of our listeners for making our last podcast the most downloaded podcast in Minnesota foul play-by-play history. I'm your host, Anthony Mariano. For Michael and Bradley Haas, we'd like to thank you. Check us out at Minnesota foul play-by-play on TikTok, at Minnesota foul play-by-play on YouTube, and at gogonzojournal.substack.com. For our podcast, you can also find us on iTunes and Spotify. Love you, boys. Peace. Bye.